So the question is about the origins of the material and how close it is to the source material. Um, I'll try to speak in English, uh, even with my jet lag. So, um, I heard that story about that story during the, the 80s, but I didn't knew I didn't know a lot of things about it. And uh, three years ago, I was coming back from uh, Hollywood because of the Oscars of Merry Christmas, Joy Noel, and my producer gave to me uh, to read the first script based on Farewell Affair, and I discovered all happened in Moscow and I discover all uh, the relationship between François Mitterrand, the French president, and Ronald Reagan. And I said to myself, it's an amazing story. I want to know more. So I took, I took this script and uh, we had a lot of interviews of uh, French secret service because they are retired now and they can talk a little. <laughs> To be honest with you, we have many, many different elements, but I'm sure we will never know the whole truth of farewell. All we know very precisely is how it happened between Mitterrand and Reagan, and all you saw really happened. Uh, we know a lot of things about farewell in Moscow, how he gave all the elements to the French guy, why he decided to give to this guy and not another one and so on and so on, but how really he, he died and so on, we don't know. For example, I was writing the script and some deep, deep people, they called me at home. They called me and they said, are you working on Farewell Affair? Yes. I understand, it's a very good idea. I know myself two or three elements which maybe you will be happy to know. Would you accept to drink a coffee with me? Yes. <laughs> and I drank some coffee with people in Paris I will never see anymore, I'm sure. And they gave me some elements. And the first of these people said to me, So Farewell is, is dead? I said, yes. Okay. Did you see the corpse? Good question. <laughs> Nobody saw the corpse. I said to him, you know, we just have a paper from the KGB given to his wife. He said, okay, if the KGB said he's dead, he must, he must be dead. So I told him, if you are telling me he's not dead, he is living in South America, South America and uh, made a startup, everything is possible. So. And he said, he said, yes, everything is possible. And he gave the money to pay his coffee and disappear. It's typically French attitude. <laughs> it's typically secret service attitude. So I tried to do my best to know the most I can, but I was sure of one thing. There is no truth. It's impossible. So it can't be a documentary. So I feel free to tell the story the way I want, the way I feel, to respect what I know. I don't know if it's a good answer for you. Yeah, question at the back. Okay. Um, she wants to know about Emilia Costa Rica because she's a famous director and she wants to know, I think, how I work with him as an actor. Am I right? Okay. First of all, uh, you must know that Emir Kusurika was not my first choice. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> I decided to make this movie with Russian people. It's a Russian story. So I went to Moscow to work with Russian actor. And I found one, a huge actor, very famous in Moscow. And he accepted to make the movie. So we go back to Paris prepare the movie and you know for, for costumes and so on but we have a big problem <laughs> the Russian ambassador in Paris called the actor on his cell phone and he said to me to him you mustn't do this movie you can't play the treasure Russian people they love you but they will never understand why you accept to make this movie 
Think about it. So he went back to Moscow. Called me and he said, okay, forget me. I've got a career in Moscow. I've got a family. I don't want to, to take any risk for a French movie. Wow. I had a, pro a co-producer, a Russian co-producer named Nikita Mikhailkov, who you might think you know him. He's a very famous director, very powerful. I mean. So I called him and I said, Nikita, what happened? An ambassador calling an actor? I can't imagine. It's not the new Russia, it's always the same Russia. He said, no, I, can't, I don't believe it. I know him, this guy. When we make a happy birthday to Putin, we are 10 and he is with us. I'm going to call him. He said, it's a good idea and please call me back. He called the guy and he called me back and he said, yes, we have a big problem. Because in the true story, in 1983, François Mitterrand expelled 47 people of the USSR embassy and the Russian ambassador was one of them. Oh, I say, okay, I'm not lucky. I have a, a Russian ambassador spy. I said, yes, but it's just uh, an ambassador, you know. He said, no, because he will come back to Moscow and he will be nominated uh, Minister of Culture. So no Russian will accept to make the movie. That's why I decided to take another guy coming from an ex-East country, able to speak Russian, but not Russian at all. And how and this is how the idea of Amy arrived. That's why now, I want to thank you, the Russian Minister of Culture, <laughs> because without him, I would never had the idea of, of Emir Kusturica, and I think that Emir in the movie is amazing. Is there another question in the audience? Yes. What happened to you? Fromant, Fromant, yes, the French uh, engineer. Um, no. <laughs> uh, on July, this July, we make a screening for, the, I mean, the people of the true story. I mean, Fromant, the director of the CIA, of, uh, not the CIA, <laughs> uh, the DST, and so on and so on. So we watched the movie, and after screening, I was really, you know, excited have the real people. So I went to see Fromont, the guy, the French engineer, and I said to him, so what do you think about the movie? And he said, well, I love the light. I said, what? The light? La lumière du film. Uh, I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> I will tell to the DP. <laughs> but I mean the story and so on. Um, I have to leave because I'm very badly parked outside. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Typical French Secret Service attitude. <laughs> so I don't know. As usual. We have time for one last question. You have a deep-seated interest in history, and uh, it's at the same time it's very poetic the way you film it and your choice of of, uh, of shots. And I wanted to uh, find out more about your interest in history and how you treat it. I told you it, it was a, a script brought by my producer, so it was not my first choice. And I don't want to be the specialist of a uh, secret old story you never know, and uh, you will know, and so on. No, no, I'm not the specialist of this. I was so uh, impressed by the story itself. Well, in two, 2009, 20 years ago, the, the war felt in Berlin. 
this story is close to that event, I'm sure. So I wanted just to do it because of this sort of way. And in the memory of the guy, farewell. He's not a hero, but I was touched by what he tried to do. And the 80s, well, I was 20. So I wanted to make a movie about my 20 years old, sort of way. To put all I heard, I heard, I love at that time, especially the Queen. <laughs> I want you to hear, we will rock you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Leo Ferré, who is a singer, a French singer, because he wrote wonderful songs, and so on and so on, you know. Making movies is not just an intellectual, uh, way of life in way. It's very, how can I say, I just want to see on screen what I wanted to see, you know. I don't um, in make any calculation. I don't, you know, I, I take it because I, it, I feel it was very hot, sorry, you know, very warm, very human. I love the idea that one man can say, I can change the world. Who can say this today? No one. I think so. Yeah. Thank, you. Well, thank you for coming. My wife is pregnant. I have to go back to Paris. <laughs>